Right, so the term ultra high risk CLL was actually called at uh, the ASH meeting in the year 2010 when an educational uh, session was um, uh, scheduled particularly on that topic. And at that time we wondered, well, what may that be? And uh, we came up with a definition, uh, one CLL patients with a 17P deletion or P53 mutation per se, which is a adverse, very adverse marker. Second, um, patients being refractory to treatment, so the classical definition of failing within six months or not achieving a remission at all. And third, patients failing relatively early after very, usually very efficacious therapy, such as FCR or bendamustin R. Okay, and these patients, if one of these three criteria is fulfilled, have a very poor prognosis with the usual salvage regimens because we know that their survival time is in the range of only two years or even less. So that is why we chose this subgroup of patients and obviously this group of patients is the greatest challenge also today when with the new agents that are becoming available or are available already in the US, uh, we obviously have a new handle on this type of disease. Right, I think um, now, recently, over the recent weeks and months, but also over the recent years, we've made big progress on the one hand with regard to the biology of the disease, with the new mutations and new cell markers that define pathogenic mechanisms, but also prognostic subgroups. And on the other hand, there has been kind of a revolution, you can say, with regard to therapy, with the new agents that are you know, orally available, very well tolerated, and still very efficacious. And the hope is obviously that with these new agents, we overcome the shortcomings of the classical chemotherapy or chemoimmunotherapy that fails in some patients, particularly in the ultra high risk patients that we discussed before. Right, so I mean, ibrutinib is certainly one of the most promising of the novel agents. I mean, there's ibrutinib, there's idelelacib, there's ABT199, to name only kind of the role models of three different, you know, targets uh, that, 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 that we use at the moment. I mean, ibrutinib, uh, you know, there's a lot of data around, just recently published and presented at ASCO and also at this meeting is, is the Resonate trial that compared it to ofatumumab as an anti-CD20 antibody with, you know, kind of overwhelmingly good results for ibrutinib. Um, it is a treatment that is usually very well tolerated. The, the major, but sometimes even very, very welcome side effect is a little bit of diarrhea or loose stools, which some patients find quite pleasant actually to have. Um, on the other hand, severe adverse events such as, uh, you know, cytopenias or infections or, you know, just poor well-being is, is, is very infrequently observed with ibrutinib. In fact, the infections become less and less, the better the disease responds to treatment and the efficacy of the treatment is, is very, very remarkable. I mean, as you say, ibrutinib poses a number of interesting uh, further questions. I mean, also the role of MRD is, is challenged with that treatment a bit because you know that with ibrutinib you can have this lymphocytosis in blood and despite this seemingly disease persistent in blood, you still have a patient that responds to the treatment and, and that, that is doing, who is doing very well. Um, on the other hand, we have these few patients that fail ibrutinib and uh, recently we, together with a, a group of investigators, could identify resistance mechanisms and the, the, the key resistance mechanism appears to be uh, mutations in the pathway. So in BTK itself, or in the immediate next, down, down, next uh, downstream signaling molecule, PLC gamma 2. These resistance mechanisms, therefore, are very specific for ibrutinib because they affect exactly the target of ibrutinib. So therefore, I think these resistance mechanisms are something much better to have than P53, which is a global resistance mechanism to all kinds of treatments. So to overcome that specific ibrutinib resistance mediated through BTK mutations, is probably easier than overcoming chemotherapy resistance due to P53. Absolutely. I mean, these agents, uh, ibrutinib, idelelacib, ABT199, produce so impressive results as single agents that it is somehow tempting to use them as single agents and kind of spare 
the other one of the three or some other compound coming down the road for the next line of treatment. On the other hand, as you say, I mean, success uh, in, in oncology in general always has been to combine different treatments into one schedule. Um, and, and, and the thing that almost never has failed is, is CD, CD20 antibodies. Um, and the combination of CD20 antibodies or other novel antibodies targeting CD37 or other targets with these agents appears to be a very tempting thing because they can get rid of the lymphocytosis more quickly, they can achieve deeper remissions. However, these are obviously questions that have to be addressed in, in well-designed clinical trials.